Next up on the green screen, we follow Fred Greenhall on a solar road tour. All right, here we are on the Solar Road Tour again, more of a walking tour today. Uh, just headed over from our Portland, Maine showroom to the east end, beautiful Bunjoy Hill, where we have a net zero apartment building uh, with Paul Ledman, Road to meet Paul, so uh, check it out. Hey, hey Paul. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Great, great. Well, this is a great sunny day. Let's take Come on in. Well, I've always been interested in energy efficiency. I used to rebuild brownstones in New York City many years ago during the Carter years when everyone was talking about how we needed to be energy self-sufficient, you know, and the technology wasn't very good then, but there were things that you could do. And we seem to have lost the concept somewhere along the line in the 80s that maybe efficiency is a good idea. So many of these buildings in, in Maine are so old, they're so leaky and so drafty. You're basically heating the atmosphere every time you turn on your boiler. You heat you heat, you heat, and the hot air disappears out of windows and cracks and through the walls and so forth. If you take an infrared picture of this house sometime in February, it's all going to be green and blue. We're not going to have any heat loss. The key to all of this and the basic thing is the fact that we don't need much energy because we don't waste. You know, you start with the insulation. Our insulation is far, far in excess of minimum standards. It is a very tight building. Uh, it's, it just doesn't lose heat, period. And if you don't lose it, you don't need more. So what we did there is we realized that we could easily heat or cool the building with something called an air source heat pump, which is a very, very common technology used around the world. You could also, you also have something called the heat recovery ventilator, which takes the warm air that we usually expel out the windows in winter, but it takes that warm air, extracts the heat, heats up the fresh air coming in to a degree, so you're not wasting the energy over and over again. Those alone would do a tremendous amount in terms of saving energy. We then went to the next level, and we have a solar hot water system. On the roof, it's a pleasant day, but it's about 65, maybe 68 degrees outside. The collector temperature reads 167 degrees. And what that really translates to is we set it up so you don't get scalded when you turn on the water, but we are basically generating all the hot water we need. It's a large tank. We'll have hot water for showers tonight, we'll have hot water for baths, we'll have hot water for dishwashers and everything, and we don't have to pay a penny for it. The sun has done it for us. And that's probably going to give us about 70% of our hot water needs throughout the year. And we also have two tanks, one for each apartment. So the tenants get free hot water basically also. And we went to the next level as well, we put in a photovoltaic system, which generates our own electricity. So much of what we generate um, much of what we use we generate ourselves. In fact, we've had the system running now for a little shy of three weeks and we're generated, we have generated about 1400 kilowatt hours, which is a phenomenal amount of electricity. You've paid back your capital costs and you have no operating costs. So how can you not do it? So the key is the insulation, the air source heat pumps, the heat recovery ventilators, the solar hot water, we generate our own with photovoltaics, low voltage lighting where possible, efficient appliances, and our lifestyle is better than it would be in a conventional house. From an individual point of view, if you're gonna build a house and you look at the costs and you look at the numbers, how can you make a decision to go with oil? Or how can you make a decision to go with natural gas? When you cut through the advertising, when you cut through all the, you know, the hype, the bottom line is energy price is gonna to continue to go up and there are alternatives that are available now in this house an example of how you can use those things cost effectively, fast payback, and be independent. When we return, we'll take a sneak peek at our upcoming Thanksgiving episode. 
This store is like the old time hardware store. Come check it out. When I was a kid, my dad took me through this great place where you could find just about any little gadget to do just about anything. These glass tubes are called heat pipes. Sun comes out, starts making steam, things get hot, showers get warm. What we're doing is we're bringing solar to Main Street. So are we on Main Street here? Well, this isn't exactly Main Street. We're on Route 108 north of the Weeks Crossing. In Dover, just, it's a great place where you can come and learn about how you can save energy by using the sun. Next up on the green screen, a sneak peek at what's cooking for our Thanksgiving special. Gala is a nonprofit based here in Ossipee, New Hampshire, and our mission is to translate sustainability education into local action that's practical, effective, and fun. And so we do that in a number of ways. This happens to be our annual event and we do um, support local ag. That's at the heart of sustainable community. Gala is based in Ossipi, um, but our, our intention um, from the beginning was always to really create a model and a template for community building that we could then make accessible to um, communities throughout New England. We believe strongly that there's really no blanket plan uh, for sustainability. It's going to look different everywhere. And that's, you know, you know, almost by definition, it does look different everywhere. It depends on that community's history, their geography, their economy, and so on. But there are tools that we can offer and ideas that can, we can plant the seeds um, for um, building upon those community assets that already exist. Um, and so really that's what Gala is trying to do um, here. We have, we have a, a model of our own, you know, contra dances happen to work well in our community, a farmer's market, a food pantry garden, um, these sustainable home and yard makeovers and so on. But, um, you know, if we can inspire other communities to take those ideas and make them their own, then, uh, then we're on our way to uh, making some, some positive change. The alternative to is uh, staying at home on a Saturday night. <laughs> um, here you get to celebrate and meet with like-minded people, people who care about where their food comes from, people who care about um, what it is they put into their bodies to keep them healthy and strong. And um, uh, it, as you can see, there's a lot of people in that, that barn who haven't met and yet they're communing around food. Uh, sharing stories and enjoying the meal. So the goal of the Farm to Table Feast is really to bring together people who are connected to food, people who care about food. So it's, it's really to turn the education awareness about um, where your food comes from and how important that is to the action of um, you know, really Making, it, making your, um, your voice heard with your fork, literally. <laughs> so that'll do us for this week on The Green Screen. Join us next week for more solutions. I think if you're going to go shopping in a, in a mall or go about more of the regular retail shopping, start small. If you see anything, it's a growing movement sustainability. So you may actually find in some of these stores some organic or recycled products. Go for those. And I always tend to stress giving someone an experience over a thing. So if you're in the store and you see like gift cards or um, movie theater tickets or restaurant gift certificates or massage gift certificates, go for the experience over the stuff.